So the Faxtron series of X-ray machines run on a Hamamatsu flat panel detector, and there's the uh, entrance to the detector, is that uh, little gray box in the middle of the uh, X-ray cabinet platform. These are the Hamamatsu uh, C9730DK-11 sensors. In this version of the machine, that's a 50 by 50 millimeter sensor with uh, 1032 by 1032 pixels. There's also a um, 120 millimeter by 120 millimeter pixel with uh, twice the resolution available. This machine does not have that. So one of the things that needs to be done is the sensor needs to be calibrated for dark field and flat field correction, which will remove fixed pattern noise and uh, inhomogeneities in the sensor response in X-ray and X-ray beam. So the, the X-ray comes down from the top of the device through the object and strikes the uh, sensor. Now how the sensor works is it has a cesium iodide scintillation co uh, coating sputtered or deposited onto the front of a CMOS or CCD detector. Uh, the scintillation uh, media uh, absorbs the X-ray photons and releases visible photons which are then detected by the, uh, the CCD or CMOS array and then that's transferred out to the computer system via USB. And one of the things is that these uh, sensors are covered with a carbon fiber sheet for uh, protection against um, physical damage. You can actually see some of that carbon fiber sheet as a fixed pattern noise um, on the X-ray detector. So to calibrate that, there's a MATLAB script uh, that I've written to do that. Uh, this MATLAB script runs the sensor through the Hamamatsu DCAM API interface. And which interface you'll, uh, which version of the DCAM API you use will depend on your operating system. Uh, the version 18.11.5660 is not backwards compatible with this series of flat panel detectors. So if you're running on a 64-bit operating system, you'll need to go back to the DKM API version 15.10.4787, and that will run on Windows 10 64-bit. And I'm running this with USB 3.0 ports. It's a USB 2.0 interface, but it will still run with 3.0 ports without problem. If you're running it on an older 32-bit system, you'll want to use the DKM API version 13.10.4. Uh, 4418, and that'll run with Windows 7 32-bit as well as on a Windows XP 32-bit uh, virtual machine. So if you need to roll back uh, onto older equipment, those versions will run with this sensor. And included with the Hamamatsu installation package, there's also the XCAP4 utility, which can be used to test these detectors and those uh, XCAP utilities, which are included in the DKM API, will work with those specified versions of the API. So uh, to configure the sensor, this is being run in MATLAB, and you'll need the image acquisition toolbox to run this. The first thing we'll do is we'll want to configure uh, the sensor. So I wrote a configuration script. Now what this does is it looks for the iMac hardware info under Hamamatsu devices and that'll uh, show the enumerated flat panel detector. If you look under your uh, device manager under Windows you'll also, you also should see the Hamamatsu detector enumerated as USB devices. So after enumerating the device it'll define a video input and a video source. It'll select one frame per trigger by default with the configuration script and then it'll set the trigger to manual and the Hamamatsu flat panel detectors do have a hardware trigger line so they have a port on the side which if you pull low um, it will generate a trigger and start image integration however for this system we'll be using the manual trigger which requires a manual function call So this script will test the dark field capture of the sensor. So what it will do is after initializing sensors, the sensor, it will define the exposure time, which can range between 0.25 and 2 seconds, and that's just the hardware limits of this particular sensor. 
It'll then de uh, define how many frames to capture per trigger event. By default, this was set to one, but you can increase the number of frames to increase the effective exposure time. So if you say a two second exposure and 10 frames, it'll generate 10 two second capture, so 20 seconds of total exposure time. You can use this to reduce noise or improve statistics. We'll then start the video object and trigger the camera exposure. It'll pause for the image acquisition time, which is the uh, integration time and sensor times the number of frames it's capturing, and then it will then load that data over the USB interface into an array. It'll then flush uh, any other, you know, flush the image buffer. Uh, it sh the image buffer should automatically flush when you do the uh, get data function call, but in case it doesn't, there's a flush data call, and it will then average multiple frames if you've captured multiple frames, and then it'll go into processing the image data. So for image data processing, what it's going to do is it's going to reshape the 2D array into a 1D array. It's going to find the mean and standard deviation of the captured pixels. And it's going to do some processing to estimate a uh, defect map, number of defective pixels, and it's going to generate a histogram. So first we're going to try this with a two second acquisition time for one frame. This will be a dark field test. It's again not firing the x-ray generator. So what we see here is the dark field capture and that is and the color bar axis on this is normalized to the histogram. So here's the histogram of captured pixels. It has a mean of around 385 and so the range on this is from around 350 to 4 30. Now mind you, the binning on the sensor is a 16-bit sensor, so it can go from 0 to 65,535 uh, for pixel counts. So this is very, very low down in the noise floor. And looking at, pl and the, looking at plus or minus two standard deviations, we can see the uh, dark field noise on the sensor. This is basically just dark current variations in the detector. Looking closer in on the defect map, this is uh, anything outside plus or minus five standard deviations. We can see that it captures uh, some of those dark field pixels, which are uh, very far out of the normalized histogram. So these are likely defective pixels. There's only around 150 of them on the sensor, which is fantastic. Now all sensors are gonna have some defect pixels and those will be, can be corrected for later in processing. So if we'll remember the histogram here, we can see that there is some variation uh, on the profile. It's not entirely smooth. There's some dips. Now to improve those statistics, what we can do is we can take multiple frames. So let's take a five frame per trigger capture. So now it's gonna take 10 seconds of total integration time divided into two second frames. And when that's done, it's going to return the frames to the computer. And what we can see for the image histogram, that's uh, having some problems plotting that there's actually only one, it seems to be plotting two histograms at once. There's only supposed to be one of them. Let's try that again. So that'll take another 10 seconds to capture the image. I'm not entirely sure why it's doing that, but you can see that the histogram's a lot smoother in exception of this effect and the software is just glitching on this capture, but you can see that the histogram's a lot smoother and has a lot uh, better statistics. You don't see as much variation from bin to bin. Okay. The next thing to do would be a uh, dark field and bright field capture, uh, a dark field and flat field capture. So what this code would do is it would take 
the same dark field image as before. And then it would take the same images with the X-ray generator on, but without any, um, d any object being X-rayed. So this would just be a flat field, which would, and this would correct for any uh, inhomogeneities in the X-ray beam due to such things as a uh, heel effect or uh, any other alignment issues or the presence of that carbon fiber plate that's protecting the image sensor. In this case, the, uh, there really isn't any expected heel effect and that, that would be uh, inhomogeneities uh, due to the uh, angle that the anode on the X-ray tube is uh, intersecting the electron beam. Uh, X-ray bremsstrahlung isn't generated just at the surface, but it's also generated somewhat inside the anode. So as you get to very, very acute angles near the cut angle of the anode, you can start, you'll start seeing fall off in intensity. However, uh, we don't actually see that on this system. So what it, what it does is it takes the uh, dark field images and then it takes the flat field images. It sets up the X-ray generator, opens the COM port, uh, sets up the, um, the X-ray system to generate an X-ray exposure over however many frames you want to average over and however much integration time. Runs through it, takes the, uh, the tri um, triggers, the a uh, flat panel detector and then just waits until the image is captured then the x-ray generator will uh, shut down and it'll just get the image data and reprocess that. I've already taken these so I can, I'll just import the data um, from the previous run so that data is now I'm just going to clear the workspace now import that data now the bright field and dark field images are imported and I'm just going to copy-paste the processing.